back at it again, and woo! We've got Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk, and Candace Owens all in one video. I came across this, and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I don't care when it was made. I got to check it out. Got to check it out. It's got to be good, okay? With these three uh, 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 gentlemen and lady, uh, it, it, it's got to be something interesting. So that's what we're going to be checking out today. Make sure you guys hit that like button, all right? Really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. I would greatly appreciate it. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel, all right? Hit that subscribe button. A couple of you guys have even let me know that you have randomly been unsubscribed from the channel. So make sure you are still subscribed, okay? And uh, follow me on social media. Those links are down below in the description box. And with that being said, let's dive in. So here we are with Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens. Charlie, of course, is the head of Turning Point USA. And Candace is the communications director, is your official title, over at Turning Point USA. And it's really exciting to have you here. I'm glad you could squeeze in the time because you guys have been busy setting the world on fire. I mean, you're in the headlines, and you're all over Twitter, obviously, and on social media. Uh, why don't you give me sort of the status update, Charlie, and then sure. I want to ask Candace some questions about sort of what's going on in, uh, in her great crusade to, to break up a yeah, lot of the group th identity th policy. Things have been going great. I mean, we've had an unbelievable semester. Uh, we spoke, I think, over 38 times since January 1st on wow. campuses, and you know that takes a grind because you do a lot of speaking, too. We did uh, UCLA, Stanford. And uh, UC Berkeley in the last six weeks, which has been amazing. Uh, we have our Young Women's Leadership Summit coming up next week. You're speaking there. And uh, yeah, we've just been, you know, kicking butt, taking names. We're expanding to more and more campuses. <laughs> but uh, we see a, a not so silent majority growing on college campuses, and the revolution is brewing. Yeah, how are you handling the additional Love sort of media attention? Because I saw there's a big New York Times piece on you. <laughs> and, uh, you know. They're with, not in love, but with laughter. Predictably. And uh, but look, that's how you know you're making a difference, right? Um, no one hunts small deer, as I always like to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, having Candace as a, an added component of what we're doing, if not the leading like the charge, it. has just been awesome. It's just been amazing to have her voice uh, be able to um, message out to this generation and to our, our members and our, our students on campus. It's been really powerful. Well, speaking of on fire, obviously, Candace, you've just exploded onto the scene. Yeah. I think probably a year and a half ago, nobody knew who you were. And now everybody knows who you are. So how's that? How's that been? That sort of precipitous rise. It's it's been challenging in some in some ways, I guess, because you have to understand that every time that you gain, I guess you could say, two hundred thousand followers, you have to sort of change your approach because people start looking at you from different angles, and you have to become more of an example for many people. And it's an interesting place to be in when you can tweet something and it becomes national news. It's, it's bizarre and people don't understand that. They don't understand and, and it's not only national news, it's how they interpret it. It could not be what you intended, but that becomes national news, their own interpretation of it. So it's been challenging, but it's also been tremendously exciting because we're seeing the difference in the comments. We're seeing that black people are starting to debate one another and they weren't doing that. They weren't, they all had decided um, that they were Democrats and that was it. They had to accept that because Republicans were racist, because you're a racist, because Charlie is a racist, well, right? Of course, I mean, that, that's it. That's, they've accepted right that. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's interesting to see them start to have a different discussion and to start to view me as someone who's a lot more thoughtful than they initially thought. They thought it was all for a paycheck, mm -hmm. right? And um, the, the tides are turning. So how, how did you get here ideologically? Because that, that that's, how did you get from point A to point B? Because again, it's not like, you know, I came up in the conservative movement, Charlie came up in the conservative movement, but you're relatively new to the conservative movement. So what's sort of your conversion story? What, what was the moment on the road to Damascus? You know, it was a lot. <laughs> I, I always say this. I was never a liberal in terms of politics. I just assumed I was a liberal. I didn't care about politics at all. And that's really the truth about the majority of the black community. We're not paying attention to politics. Um, our communities have been so burdened by issues, by finances, by the fact that the father's removed from the home. One of my favorite videos, by the way, is... I can, I can definitely attest to what she just said, <laughs> for sure. For a long time, I never paid attention to politics. And then, you know, I was like, hmm, maybe I should take a clo closer look into this. And, uh, you know, obviously the journey has been documented. All right. The journey, ha the whole thing has been documented. Now, obviously, off the camera, I've had some moments, you know, looking up stuff like, "Ooh, wow, didn't know that. But, you know, for the most part, the journey has been documented and you guys have been along that journey with me, which I greatly appreciate. All right. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting to see, like, holy crap, wow, I've, I've, I've actually been a Republican my entire life and just didn't even know, but I thought, like, I was a Democrat. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, uh, I, I had a conversation with someone before, and, uh, you know, they basically said the same thing. 
Like, no, I, I knew you were a Republican before. I just never just never said anything. It's like, wait, what? How? Uh, just because of some of the stuff we would talk about. So, you know what I mean? It was just like, oh, why? Whoa. my entire life, I thought I was a Democrat, which is just crazy to, to, to really even think about how the machine and how Democrats have have brainwashed a lot of folks, including myself for a long time to think, oh, I'm, I'm black, got to be a Democrat. But in reality, when you look at, you know, life and the way, you know, you think about things and, and how you go about things, you're really a Republican. But you're voting Democrat, which doesn't even make any type of sense. Of you, when you shut down Black Lives Matter, oh, you start you. asking some really good questions. One of the first videos that Charlie sent me when I started sort of having this awakening and wanting to get involved, and I looked to people like you to sort of say, wait a second, something's not adding up. So I would say um, in... I guess July of last year, I was working in finance, had was not paying attention to politics at all. Obviously, I think with the the rise of Donald Trump, everyone started paying attention to politics. Hard everyone to had to <laughs> develop an opinion. And what it came down to was that my beliefs and everything that I had fought for in my life aligned with conservatism. I've always had to work hard. I was never given yep. any handouts. I had $100,000 in student loan debt. Um, my grandfather was ex is extremely pious. I was raised with prayers around the dinner table, the Bible stories in the morning. And today, that's a conservative position. So when I started paying attention... 100% can back that whole thing right there. And I realized that I was a conservative. Well, what's, what's really interesting is all these new conversations that are happening. Way. I mean, obviously the most prominent that both of you have been involved in are these conversations with Kanye West, which I can say completely came out of left field for most people, yeah. myself included. Uh, so w how much do you think that those conversations are actually shifting uh, across the country for, for young people? And sure. then also, how much do you think that the celebrity conversations shift conversations more broadly? In and the I, I will say this, it came out of left field for me and, and for you, but not for her when I first, mm. so I hired Candace Owens four and a half minutes after I met her. I saw passion and vision unlike anything that I've encountered. And from the first couple minutes afterwards, she's like, Charlie, you don't understand. Kanye West is going to come out as a conservative Trump supporter. I was like, now, <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? I was like, come on. Um, and, and I kind of, I was not, I'm not very pop culturally literate. She's been doing better there. Next <laughs> more naive. I, I mean, everyone's yeah, more yeah, pop culturally exactly. literate than I. No, you, you'd be surprised. I, I said, I was like, wait, is he the one married to Beyonce? And she's like, I, did I just <laughs> agree to work for this guy? It was so uh, bad. We're doing a lot better now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, she, she started to get me listening to his music, all sort of stuff. It's like just pounding me. And she's like, this is going to happen. And so that, that's the first thing. But and I, I mean, when this happened and he said, I love the way Candace Owens thinks, that was one of his first public statements right. in a long time. And, you know, she sense kind of has forward, forward friendship and relationship there. But I think you saw Chance the Rapper come out and he had to then denounce what he said. You know, all black people have to be Democrats. But I love this. And Candace pointed out so accurately on Twitter. Kanye did what did Chance the Rapper say? I'm going to have to look that up. That up. Didn't apologize for his vocalization right. of support. And now his music's doing better than ever. Mm -hmm. Doing better than Eminem who went after him and tried to make a whole career right. out of it. So I, I understood, obviously, coming from within a black home, which you can understand the stats and it's important that you do. I think what you do is so important um, when you hit the stage and you ask these questions and you talk about the single motherhood rate. But in order to understand how we got brainwashed, how did I, I'm, I've always been a very smart girl, I've always placed well um, in school and on tests, how did I start to believe that all Republicans were racist? So I had to sort of say, when did this seep into my mind? And the truth is that it's, it's systematic. There are three verticals that they're able to um, attack if you, if you say it's attack, I think it's an attack, um, the way that black people think. The first is family. It's the breakdown of the family, which you've spoken about, right? Mm -hmm. The single motherhood rate. And when you remove the father from the home, the black youth then begins to idolize culture. This vertical is so important. When you understand that, instead of listening to mom and dad, because dad's not in the home, they're listening to Jay-Z and Kanye West and Beyonce to tell them what's right and what's wrong. This is why Hillary Clinton throws a Jay-Z and a Beyonce concert and doesn't actually go into the black communities and speak to them about their issues because she knows that if she can get Beyonce to and I'm with her shirt, then the black community will support it. Do I agree with that? No, but that's what's happening. So that vertical has to be attacked. True. Third, of course, is education. We learn our history wrong. We actually are learning in school that the Republican and the Democratic Party switched. The Southern strategy is taught in school. I didn't really know how to attack that vertical, but Charlie was already doing it. So I understood the first two and Charlie understood the third, and it was sort of like a perfect partnership. And, and that was what we really wanted to go after. I mean, what you guys obviously are doing is, is making a big difference. I mean, we see all the videos online yeah. of you talking to people who never would have considered conservatism before, and suddenly they're looking at it for a second time right. and starting all these conversations. And really, good luck to everything you're doing. I mean, I know that you guys are, are running from place to place. You have a
an incredibly busy schedule uh, over the next few weeks, particularly. And I hope that uh, you continue to do so much of the good work that, that you've Thank been you. doing. Obviously, I've been a big advocate for Turning Point for appreciate a long time. Yeah. And uh, and you guys are doing great work out there. So really Likewise. appreciate it. So thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay. This is awesome. Thanks. Wow. Uh, wish that conversation was longer. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I feel like that that one was not long enough. OK, I could have sat here and listened to them talk for hour and a half, two hours. All right. Maybe not like sit here. You know, I probably would have gotten up and started to do something else at some point. You know, um, do you guys like listen to videos like while you're like doing other things? Because that's me. Um, you know, when whenever I'm like not recording, you know, I'm listening to something while I'm doing something while I'm, you know, doing some yard work or, you know, you know what I mean? Um, doing some around the house kind of stuff or whatever it is. So yeah, I I, I could have listened to to them, you know, talk for for literally hours, hours and hours and hours. Because I'm sure the conversation would have been fantastic. And you know, to 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 quickly touch on what Candace Owens was talking about, I can 100% agree. 100%. Um, and I touched I touched on some of the stuff, but even towards one of those last points that she made that you know democrats understand and once again this goes back to something that i've repeated over and over again and i want to keep repeating it because i think it's important that people get this democrats know how to play the game and they play it very very well on all fronts on all fronts including what candace owens mentioned there towards the end she democrats like hillary clinton which there's a weird video that i came across that i might upload as a youtube short so Maybe look out for that. It's a it's a huge conspiracy video. I don't necessarily believe it, but I just thought it was quite interesting. So I might just put it out there into the atmosphere anyway. But um, Democrats and you know like Hillary, they understand the game. They they understand it and play it very well. So that's why they have people like she was talking about Jay Z and Beyonce stand on stage with her, speak out in 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 support of you know her because. Democrats know that a lot of black people have no role models in their home. So they look for role models outside of the home. And who are the people that are put in front of their face all the time? Big popular artists. Big popular artists. Big rappers. Who's one of the biggest rappers? Jay-Z. Who's one of the most popular uh, 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 singers? Beyonce. So that's who they get out there. And, uh, you know, I, I think I think Republicans have to do a better job of sitting down with some of these celebrities and, you know, having an open and honest dialogue, becoming friends with some of these folks, because that's what Democrats do. That's what Democrats do. They're just using these celebrities, just using them. They don't truly care about these celebrities. They don't, you know, <laughs> Hillary don't really care about black people. She just, hey, Jay-Z, Beyonce, just stand on stage with me, please. Can, can, can you do just a little concert? Like she said, she, Hillary's not going out into the black community saying, hey, I see this problem, this problem, this problem, and this is how I think, you know, I can solve these issues around here. No, I'm going to get your big black role models and I'm going to put them on stage next to me, next to me. So then you approve of me because they approve of me and I know you're going to vote for me. Republicans have to get better at playing the game like the Democrats do. Otherwise, you're just going to continue to lose. But what do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.